Joining us here at the CTF Tech headquarters in Tallinn are uh, the two co-founders of Cybixer Technologies, Mr. Andrus Kivisar and Lauri Alban. Good day, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, the same time last year we were in Abu Dhabi, uh, we were in this beautiful hotel, uh, the uh, Emirates Palace, hundreds of people in one room and right now we are in the circumstances of Corona, so everything is still happening. Do we actually need or need it to get together for a CTF at all? I'm not going to lie to you, it, it feels different this year, but, but so many other things feel, but, uh, but I think what is great about uh, this year's cyber battle of the Emirates is that uh, we can still do it. We do it online. Uh, this is what we do. We need to adapt. I, I think this is this is the symbol of uh, vitality of this com uh, competition. No matter what, we still are are going to do it, and and we as a company are are determined to do it. Uh, and, and we're so glad that we have still so many people. Yeah, I think that uh, the the fact that this uh, it is happening uh, despite all the all the things that are happening around uh, in the world and uh, I think that uh, the interest towards the competition is still on the, on the rise and uh, I think that uh, we have so many uh, teams signed up uh, this year so that I think that, uh, the, 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 that next year I think the competition will be even greater. And, and, and to your question of course it's great to meet and, and this sense of community that we had uh, last year in the, uh, during the cyber battle of the Emirates, that's, that was just wonderful. The, the venue, the uh, Emirates Palace in Abu Dhabi, I think this is one of the most beautiful hotels in the whole world. Uh, this time we are, we are online, uh, but look at the benefits of this. We had uh, just two or three international teams participating last year. This year it is an international competition. As Andrew said, we had, uh, I think, uh, candidates from 40 different countries who wanted to uh, participate in this competition. We were able to, uh, to receive only 15 and, uh, and, and, and we still have, you know, um, representatives from, I think you know better, but uh, um, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, India, of course, United Arab Emirates, uh, Estonia naturally, uh, but so many other countries. Germany, Belgium. So there were 25 teams and altogether 125 players from 40 different countries who actually signed up for the CTF. The demand is, uh, is a lot bigger than actually we can, we can serve to, since we all know only 15 of the teams can compete. So what are you going to do about the demand? Well, of course, we are uh, going to try to facilitate all the all the interested uh, players and and uh, and then teams in the in the future games. And I think that uh, you are right. The demand and the interest towards CTFs is uh, is uh, rapidly growing. And and I think that the the, the building of the community is uh, is important. And I think that uh, that the CTFs as such as a game format uh, are giving also the ability to actually involve younger generation already. Uh, at schools to to these type of competitions and then the, the great example of that was the the cyber battle of Tartu that we had uh, here in a couple of weeks ago uh, where from where actually the winning teams are playing also in the in the cyber battle of the Emirates so I think that uh, that uh, we cannot kind of under underestimate uh, the necessity of actually bringing it more uh, to the uh, closer to the to the students and, and uh, participants speaking of the cyber battle of Tartu for instance uh, what does a what does a country have to do to actually find that talent I, I think the um, first thing is that we need to realize that the cyber threat has grown so large that we need to take a generation to uh, to go and and work with them early on. Uh, what was the biggest surprise to us uh, from from Cyber Battle of Tartu? We first thought that our mission is to find talent, that we need to find these talented kids who who sit at homes and uh, and and uh, would like to solve CTFs and are, are dealing in cybersecurity. And this is true to a certain extent. We we found a lot of people. Uh, and, and, and young people who, who were interested. But what was most surprising to me was that we had sign-ups from people who had almost no experience in cyber, but they still were interested, 
we had them in boot camps and in a very short period of time actually they were you know participating in ctf on command line and uh, and uh, and uh, contributing to this uh, exercise on almost at par with with some of their uh, some of their uh, friends uh, who are more experienced so i think one of the keys is also not to think that we need to find that you know non-existing or, or existing somewhere in our minds talent i think we need to make young people interested to demystify the, the complexity around it and to send the message that everybody can be um, a hacker on on the side of good ones so uh, if we're talking about the cyber battle of emirates two years in a row an estonian company has organized it uh, the link between Estonia and the Emirates, for instance, uh, rather than, uh, except being in, in almost the same time zone, uh, it, 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 it's not like the, the most like, obvious link between two countries. So what is the connection between Estonia and, and the Emirates? I think there are more connections than, uh, than, uh, than one can immediately say, but I think uh, what we like about the Emirates and, and what we feel very comfortable also here in Estonia is the spirit of innovation. And you, if, if you go in Abu Dhabi, if you go in Dubai, if you go in uh, Alain, um, all, all those uh, uh, Emirates, you see that uh, it is very much like, like what we're used to in Estonia. People want to in innovate, they want to experiment with new technologies, they want to encourage young people to, uh, to participate in the development of the country. We are building our countries, we are innovating our countries both. We have experiences, Emirates has experiences and through this exchange, like this competition, Cyber Battle of the Emirates or Cyber Battle of Tartu or the whole series of Cyber Battle, this is one of the great uh, initiatives of just being innovative countries who, who just want to work together and this is great about today's world. You, you don't need to live next door to actually have a meaningful and, and deep cooperation. Andrus, yeah. as a cybersecurity businessman, what is your relationship uh, with uh, the UAE? Well, first of all, of course, uh, we are very pleased and honored to, to do it as a second uh, year on a row, as you, as you mentioned, and I hope that this cooperation will continue and we will be able to do it more and more. And, uh, and, uh, UA has been uh, for us uh, definitely innovation driver as Laurie mentioned that, uh, that the whole country actually strives toward the, the innovative solutions and, and, and I think that a lot of our technology and uh, the visualizations that we have for our cyber range and, and, and the cyber battlefields is, is actually uh, have been contributed a lot by the, by the UAE and I, I think that it is important to, to sort of keep uh, the company going with uh, with this type of good corporations and 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 uh, kind of uh, forward looking uh, customers speaking about technology what is special about the technology that is used in in cyber battle of the emirates which is devel developed by you one of the uh, parts of the innovation is uh, regarding the visualization is also the the ability to to make it uh, understandable for the users, and as Dylan has mentioned, also that uh, that uh, you know years ago the, all the comp cyber competitions and uh, CTFs uh, uh, might look like a bunch of people in the room sending emails to each other, but uh, now with uh, with the visualization and making it uh, more understandable, we have overcome the, the difficulty of, uh, of understanding what is actually happening, dur happening during the competitions and, and I think it's a key part also for uh, involving or making an interest uh, in, the, in the younger generation so that they actually can understand and follow the game and, and see what, it, what is happening and that, uh, that, that makes it uh, much more exciting and, uh, and uh, curious. And, and here's a request to all our viewers uh, who follow us online uh, if you have uh, further ideas how to improve the visualization, how to tell the story of the competition, then uh, drop us an email or, or put it even in the comments and, uh, and, and we would be more than grateful because one of the missions that we have is try to put complex com uh, concepts into a, a simple, understandable um, story and to be able to tell the story of cyber competition will help us to make those competitions much more uh, much more fun uh, as it was with cyber uh, 
uh, Battle of Tartu, we actually built the scenario around uh, hacking off uh, of various elements of the city. Uh, our plan is actually to go ahead and, uh, and create uh, a, a series of CTFs that, uh, that would uh, play through a whole hack the city uh, scenario that we, can, uh, that we can further develop. So stay tuned on that. Uh, all the ideas are welcome and uh, let's just make it even better. Having done numerous NATO level exercises, large trainings, why do you look at the field of working with young hackers? But we need the next generation and uh, this, is, uh, this is so exciting and, uh, and interesting to actually uh, grow the next generation of, uh, of cyber defenders. I think again this is part of, uh, part of our mission. Uh, we need to start early. The, uh, as we said, the threat is already so complex that uh, we need to start growing uh, the next generation of, uh, of defenders when they are in high school. Because when they reach the university level, when they reach to, I don't know, conscription in, in army, it's too late already. Uh, we need them to get involved uh, as, uh, as early as possible. So, uh, so, so this is one of the reasons. And this, by the way, it's much more fun. <laughs> and, uh, and, and as you have also said yourself, that uh, there is always uh, too few hackers on the good side. That's true. That's true. That is always true. So to uh, sum it up, what lies ahead in, in the field in general and, and in, uh, in, in the things you are working on at the moment? Definitely have more uh, more competitions involving more uh, more uh, uh, participants, uh, growing the community, and uh, I think that uh, kind of uh, taking this uh, mission of uh, involving the young generation uh, uh, further. I think one of the things what we want to do is is to move from this uh, one-off events and competitions, which are great and interesting, and, and we should definitely keep going uh, on those to actually uh, build a platform. When, uh, where people can join in all across the all around the world, uh, practice, uh, prepare for the competitions, exchange ideas, also importantly create tasks, uh, because we want that uh, sharing to to be uh, uh, going on also. Uh, so um, new scenarios, uh, new storylines for competitions. This is all that. Uh, this is what we are seeing today. Is, is hopefully just the beginning and, uh, and we are at the, at the verge of uh, creating uh, a great new platform and community for CTF. Thank you so much for joining uh, Anders Kivisar and Laura Alman. Thank you. Thanks.